Salem students discuss life after school, future careers, and their community. We bring you the first of several panel discussions we conducted with area high school students on today's Daily Buzz. Today's Business Journal Daily Buzz is brought to you by 717 Credit Union. Throughout February and March, the Business Journal held several roundtable discussions with freshmen through seniors from several high schools in the area. The roundtables were held to gain a perspective on how young adults view the region as part of our Brain Gain program, which focuses on building a culture of entrepreneurship and promoting workforce development. The panels were moderated by Business Journal content manager Jeremy Lydic. All the students were selected by the schools. The video you're about to watch has been slightly edited for time, but the subject matter and spirit of the discussion has not been altered. Today we hear from 11 students from Salem High School who discuss life after high school, their future careers, and their community. Brain Gain is sponsored by the Moransky Companies, Sweeney Chevrolet Buick GMC, and the Mahoning Valley Manufacturers Coalition. Show of hands. How many of you are planning to attend college after high school? Okay. Donald, Colin, you guys are not. You're two, uh, both of you are seniors, right? Yes. And you're not going to college? Nope. Uh, Doug, can you tell me why? Uh, I don't want to. Why is that? Uh, money. Money? Yeah. Money as in? Don't have, well, I want to go into law enforcement anyhow, so. Oh, okay. Yeah. So what are you doing to pursue that? Uh, I'm going to work at a machine shop in town until... I go to Academy, Tom 21. Uh, where's the Academy? I'm not sure where I'm going to go yet. Okay. Uh, so do you plan to stay in the area then? Or? I don't know. You don't know yet? Yeah, I don't have a clue. Okay. Yeah. But if uh, money weren't an obstacle, would you consider college? Or you Probably. Still, really? Yeah. Okay, so it's pretty much just being able to afford college? Yeah. Okay. How about you, Michael? Uh, I'm already in fire and EMS, so I've, I've gone the trade route to begin. So I've got a couple more classes to finish up. And uh, Tell me about that. How did you get, uh, I think that's a certification? Yeah, it's a certification. So there's, there's multiple levels for firefighter, and I've uh, gotten the first one. I'm about to start for the second one at the end of this month. At the end of this month. Okay. Um, I got to start in uh, an internship program my freshman year with a different department. So I kind of split ways with them and took the class and joined a different department and got hired on. So. How did you hear about uh, all of this? Uh, through the school announcements, actually. I was the only one to take it seriously and went and checked it out, and it worked out because I got my career set. So. Okay. Oh, so you're a fireman. Are you going to be a fireman right out of high school then? I already am. Already am? Yeah. Okay. Carry the pager. I'm, I'm a volunteer right now, so. Oh, okay. This time next year, I'll go full-time. I have to get my EMS certificate, my EMT certificate, so. Okay. That's very cool. Yep. Is that something you've always wanted to do? Not really. I wanted to get into law enforcement up until freshman year, and then freshman year I kind of changed ways and saw that as a little bit different way to serve the community. And I okay. took it a little bit better. So you happy with that choice? Very happy. Good. It served me well. Good. And uh, you said serving the community. Uh, how important is that to you? Um, well, since my freshman year, it's kind of been all I do. I mean, if we had a free day off of school, I'd usually go to the department and run calls. Um, Right now, I'm a volunteer, like I said, so 24 7 I've got the page around my hip, and if it goes off, I'm usually going. So, do you plan to stay in the community for the, the long haul? Um, right now, I, I've got a contract, so I'm here for a couple of years. Um, mm -hmm. Eventually, I, would, I do want to move out of state, though. So, oh, really? Yeah, once I get my the rest of my certifications underway. Why is that? Where do you want to leave? Um, I've always lived in Ohio. I just want to move out west and see what's out there. So. Okay, just to kind of explore a little bit? Yeah. Is there anything that Salem could do to keep you in the community? I don't know. I think it's more or less just a, a culture thing. I've seen this for my whole life so far. I want to see what else is out there. Your long life so far. Yeah, <laughs> all 18 years. So. Right on. Okay. Uh, Donald, you also have your hand or you didn't have your hand raised, right? Mm -hmm. You don't plan to go to college? No. Why is that? Uh, kind of like money. I just want to go to the military and serve. Go to the military? Is it something going into the military something you always wanted to do? Yeah. Okay. What branch? Uh, Navy. Okay. Why the Navy? Uh, I don't know. Just think that they're one. Of, I I like them a lot. Okay. Now, after you get out of the military, or do you plan to stay in like as a career? Uh, I plan to serve a couple of years and then get out and then uh, 
get out and go work for a family business. Oh, uh, which family business? Uh, one run by my grandpa. What's he do? Uh, 21st Century Alarm, uh, build cameras, install cameras, that kind of stuff. Okay. And what kind of education or training do you think you're going to need to do that? Uh, I'm not too sure yet. Not too sure Just yet? Just kind of focus on the military. Okay. Do you plan to take over the business one day? Yeah. Okay. So you have a little bit of an entrepreneurial mindset? Yeah, a little bit. A little bit? Okay. That's pretty cool. Um, so then you plan to stay in the area? Yeah. Okay. Got gotcha. you. Um, Maddie, you are looking to get into college? Yeah. Where do you plan to go? Uh, I don't really know yet. I just want to get into the medical field. That's all I know. Medical? Yeah. Okay. Uh, do you want to stay within state? or? Not really. I don't know why. I just want to get out. Well, you just want to get out? Yeah. What is it about uh, getting out that attracts you? I don't know. You just see everything, and it's like so different from here, and I just want to see like what else there could be that could make me happier than here. Okay. Is there anything about the area that makes you unhappy? I mean, not really. I just like coming to school and then go home. Like, that's all I do. I don't really talk to like the people here or anything else, but it's like, I don't know. Why do you talk to the people here? I don't know. It's just, mm -hmm. my family is just kind of close and that's it. We don't really have like family friends or anything else and it's just like us. So. What's important to you in a community? It'd be nice if like everyone got like along better, like, I don't know. Okay. Uh, you mentioned medicine. Anything specific in medicine you want to study? No, I just like the idea of helping people. Mm -hmm. Okay. How about you, Colin? I don't plan to attend college. You don't plan to attend college? No. What do you plan to do after high school? Probably landscaping, and I'm going to start touching my toes into Bitcoin mining here soon, once okay. I get my new computer. All right. So you want to do, are you uh, working with any landscaping companies now? Not right now. Not right now? Have you looked into it? I mean, I just haven't been doing much because I have my job at KFC right now. And okay. we went to the career center on the field trip and kind of liked it there. So, what was? Tell me about the uh, trip to the career center. What was that about? They let you go and see what they do in the program mm -hmm. and what well, you get to experience there and what it offers out of college, high school and stuff. And okay. And uh, through the career center, you know, career technical centers, are, that stuff is usually paid for, not a lot of debt. Yeah. Is that something that uh, you're thinking about when you're choosing between career center or college? Yeah, I'm probably just going to attend the career center. Okay. Try and well, get something out of high school. I'm sorry, what was that? I'm probably just going to get something out of high school. Okay. Is anyone else thinking about a career center? No? Because uh, you guys did mention... Money is an issue. Doug, you definitely mentioned uh, money is an issue. Um, being able to go to a career center and get an education without accruing all kinds of debt, is that something you've considered? Mm, no. No? Not really. Not really? Michael? My certifications have all been through the career center so far at oh. Mahoney County, though. So, mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of the places they'll do the high school kids in the mornings of the day and in the evening they'll do the adult education. That's what I went through. So. Okay. Yeah. So, I. It's got to feel pretty nice to have everything you need and yeah, not be dragged down by debt like people like me. Right. <laughs> yeah. Right on. How about you, Grant? Um, right now, I'm thinking I'd like to go to law school. Law school? Yeah. Where'd you like to go? Uh, Ohio State. Ohio hopefully, State. yeah. Okay. And then what? Um, maybe start my own firm eventually. I'll start goal. your own firm home or outside I'm not area? sure. It depends on how the uh, certification would work out. Probably not in Salem. Not in Salem? I like the community. There's just not enough pool factors to stay here, I what, think. What's a pool factor? Like things that that bring new people into the community. What would you like to see as a pool factor? I don't know. It's just kind of stale, I think. Stale? Yeah, I like the community and I like I do a lot in the community, mm -hmm. but there's too many other things out there that like you need to go see and not enough to stay in Salem. Long term, what's important to you in the community? Opportunities. Opportunities for what? Jobs, new housing, stuff like that, mm -hmm. I think. Do you think that by starting your law firm in Salem, you can help contribute to maybe establishing some of those pull factors? Perhaps. Yeah. How about you, Melina? 
Um, after graduating this year, I want to go to like Kent State and become like a criminal justice. Another criminal justice person? Okay, what do you want to do in criminal justice? Like find criminals, like, like you know, like people killing and all that stuff. Okay. <laughs> this is me. All right. Inspiring so and all that stuff, you know. What uh, has inspired you for that type of career? I don't know. I like I was watching a movie one once with my um with my family. Like I used to go with my cousins. We watch movies and all stuff and then mm -hmm. no, I don't know, just you know. Okay. Um and what are you thinking about as far as uh financing and that sort of thing? You know, going to college. College can be pretty expensive. My well when I was a freshman, like we always save money, like my parents like sometimes for grades. Like if I get A's, it's fifty. So mm -hmm. I save all my money and to myself. Like not spend most of them. Okay, Jocelyn. Um, I plan on going to college in state and then moving out of state. Why do you want to move out of state? Because I've lived in better places than Ohio, and I want to get out of Ohio. Where else have you lived? I've lived in West Virginia, Virginia, and Pennsylvania. Okay. So what is it about those places that, in your opinion, make it better than Ohio? I think it's just the fact that I'm so used to being here. I've lived here for the majority of my life, and the fact that there is something else out there for me to, like, explore, mm -hmm. even, is, like, I don't know. What do you want to do professionally? I want to be a teacher. Be a teacher? Okay. Um, so you can teach pretty much anywhere. Yeah. So what's important to you in the community then? Um, people getting along, um, the fact that like job opportunities, basically what everyone else has already said. Mm -hmm. Not enough job opportunities in this area? Yeah, not really. What, what can the community do to, or what can you guys do in the community to help beef up job opportunities, that sort of thing. You guys getting involved with the community at all or going to township meetings, anything like that? Grant? I'm in Key Club and we do a lot of service projects and I've also helped with some of the uh, Second Saturday stuff in town. Okay. And I think that, that helps. It's a nice event for everyone to get up and go around town and explore what's really there that they haven't been before. What sort of results are you seeing from work with Key Club? I think that getting the youth involved in the school at like the bottom level is really important. And really that's one of the reasons to stay in Salem is because of like organizations, Kiwanis, Key Club, Second Saturday, just all these things that are doing, that are active and doing things for the like, school and the community. Okay. Who is involved with anything outside of school? Any groups or clubs or anything like that? Jocelyn? I'm also in Key Club. Also in Key Club? You guys over here? Key Club. Key Club. How's the experience been, Max? Awesome. Yeah? Love it. Uh, what are some of the things you've done? I'd like to give a thanks to Kiwanis, because Kiwanis really helps out with uh, getting uh, opportunities for us to serve the community, whether it's like a spaghetti dinner or the second Saturdays, mm -hmm. uh, just around. What does it mean to you to be, to have that connection to your community? It really shows that like anybody can be a leader in their community, mm -hmm. and that if you just go out it makes you feel good too. Okay. Makes good connections. Good connections. Mm -hmm. What sort of con uh, connections you've made so far? Qantas is a pretty big group, and they have lots of friends, mm -hmm. friends in the community. And uh, anywhere you go, you'll you, there's a chance of running into Kwani and you say hi and stuff. But it's just nice knowing people like that. Okay. What are you thinking of doing after high school? Uh, I'll probably attend college. Where at? Uh, I'm not too sure. Probably somewhere more urban. Okay. Uh, what's your dream job? I don't know. No idea? No. What, do you, what are you interested in? What are your hobbies? Uh, I like music. Yeah? Yeah, that's about it. You thinking of studying music at school? Uh, yeah, I could see myself getting like sound production. Sound production? Okay, gotcha. Reese, we haven't heard from you yet. <laughs> You're just starting out. You're a freshman, right? Yeah. All right, so uh, you thinking about anything like this yet? Uh, going to college. Yeah. I don't know where. Don't know where? No. What are some of your interests? Um... I'm really interested in like nursing, medical stuff. Okay. So, do you have to go to college to become a nurse? Uh, I mean, I probably should. 
Probably should. Have. <laughs> what about a uh, career center or a trade center? There's a lot of uh, you know EGCC in Youngstown has a nursing program. Um, Community college. I don't Still know. college. Yeah. Okay. I don't know. Show of hands. Uh, when you're thinking about your dream job, what you want to do, uh, do you feel prepared for the next step, or does it feel like jumping off a cliff? Who feels prepared? Everyone. Alex, I don't think we heard from you yet. Yeah. How do you feel prepared? Um, I feel like uh, Salem has done a pretty good job of preparing me for what I need to attend college and how classes are going to be. Mm -hmm. What do you like? To what do you want to study? I plan on going for business, business administration and management. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then, uh, what do you think that could lead to? Owning my own business. You want to be an entrepreneur too? Yeah. What is it about entrepreneurship that drives you? The freedom. You can really do whatever. Okay. So without giving away any million dollar ideas, what kind of business would you like to start? Well, I think that uh, investment in property is very lucrative. So okay. that would probably be something to do with that. Are you doing anything now to sort of bone up for that? No. No? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so do you plan to invest in properties in, in this area, or do you no. want to leave? Uh, I do plan on leaving. Um, like Grant and uh, Jocelyn said, there are a lot more opportunities outside of Salem. And I mean, maybe when I'm older, I'll come back. But for now, um, there are more a lot, a lot more opportunities outside of Salem. I hear that a lot. Yeah. from all the different student panels is people want opportunities but very few people have been able to really identify what kind of opportunities they're looking for. Can you be the first one to really identify well, some opportunities? I don't think there's much, like for me specifically, property. Mm -hmm. There's not much property here to invest in and even if you like buy property here there's nobody that wants to buy that property because there's nothing to do here. Exactly. So if I buy a lot for development and then try to sell it, nobody wants to buy that lot because nobody wants to build a house here. Really? Mm-hmm. Okay. And have you researched that? My mother is interested in developing property. She was also, okay. she also majored in business, so. Gotcha. Yeah, we talk about that sort of thing a lot. So what are some amenities you think could help the property investment market? Well, Salem would have to change a lot in order for people to want to, in order to convince younger people to spend the rest of their lives here, Salem would have to change a lot, I think, because there's a lot that turns younger people away. Such as? Well, I mean, downtown is dilapidated and falling apart. <laughs> there's not a lot to, if you, if you want to spend an evening on the town, there's nothing to do in Salem. Okay. What we do is mostly go to Walmart because that's the only thing to do in Salem. There's nothing better than that. Most of the buildings and stuff in this town are run down and falling apart. Like the entirety of State Street at this point, part of those buildings are collapsing. Mm -hmm. Like Eurogyro, for example, the top floor of that building just collapsed and now that business is out of business. Now I will say a year or so ago I actually came to downtown Salem to go see a play my buddy was in. He was in uh, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Um, couldn't get into a restaurant with less than a 30-45 minute wait and there's a lot of people bopping around. Seems like there is stuff to do downtown. Does any of that interest you guys at all? Maddie. Well, most of the stuff downtown is just like food. If you want to hang out with someone, it's either do you want to go grab dinner or hey, you want to go out of town and go to like the mall or something or go to Walmart and hang out and just do stuff or like just drive around. That's it. So what are some of the things that you'd like to see in the community that would speak to your generation? I think that uh, revitalizing the downtown is a good first step. Like when they started doing the, um, there's the spray paint some of the spray paint art on the side of the, the walls and uh, mm -hmm. just making new signs and stuff like that. Or even as simple as, like, a few months ago, they changed the lights downtown. You know, they were these gross yellow lights and they made them like LEDs or whatever. And that really made a big difference, I think, in like how people see the downtown 
and okay. like that's the heart of the community and it needs to progress with us i think well let me challenge you guys then so it sounds like you have some very strong opinions about the community are any of you doing anything i mean some of you are involved in different community groups are any of you doing anything to maybe move the needle a little bit? I think the question is whether that's our responsibility or the government's responsibility to take care of this building. <laughs> because it is the government's responsibility to take care of Salem as a whole and, if, and to promote and grow business in Salem. And if small businesses want to come to Salem and like set up shop in State Street, most of them come and then leave within six months because nobody's going to buy anything from them because downtown is dilapidated and like Euro, Euro gyro set up they were doing pretty well and now they're out of business because that building is falling apart and on the brink of collapse but how can the government make those steps if people like you aren't stepping up and saying this is kind of what we want well I believe that at this moment we're stepping up and saying this is what we want well so. that's why we got the cameras here yeah uh, Jocelyn and going off of what he was saying you see all of the buildings downtown they're filled with signs like they're they have the signs that cover the whole windows which mm -hmm. are like we want your business here like this is what your business could look like but they will come here but they can't stay because we don't make enough money to purchase their goods that are more expensive because they're homemade and from a small business okay. Maddie well it's also about like the older generations like my mom for instance she's always like you can do more stuff with it, but then again, she's also like, you're just like a child and like, what are you gonna do about it and everything else? So it's like kind of back and forth. Like they expect us to do stuff, but they also think that we can't do it. So it's like that. As a younger person, do you feel heard by the older generations? I mean, it just depends on like their viewpoints of certain things, mm -hmm. I guess. Jocelyn? Like some people like the old town feel of having the older buildings on state, on state Street and like sure. the older houses in like on the back streets and stuff. But like we need to become more modernized so that we can build up our economy to be better so that people will actually want to come here. Okay. Uh, one thing you guys are saying is job opportunities. How many of you have a job outside of school? Uh, Grant, what you doing? Um, I work downtown at Ezio's, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm a busboy there, and I'm also employed at the golf club, which it's out of town, but Ezio's, I think, is a good insight into the community just because of its location. It's right downtown, mm -hmm. and I see people I know there all the time, and... Um, I think it brings a lot of traffic into town just because it's good food. Okay. And uh, Is it difficult balancing work and school? I don't find it to be very difficult because I generally just work on the weekends. But mm -hmm. some days, like, if I get called in on a weeknight, I'll be, I'll be up until, like, 11, and then I come home and just go to sleep. But, like, you can't get enough sleep sometimes, you know. Oh, so, yeah, I know. <laughs> For the guys that are working and then also looking to go to college is all this money going toward financing for college grant uh, i had my parents start me a custodial portfolio that i manage like investments let me know what that is I don't know. like like i um on my phone i have an app where i can invest the money that i make into different stocks and etfs how's that working out pretty well i mean <laughs> slowly but sure. You know, I have like, I started it like last year and I have like 1,200 in there now. So I expect, I put however much of my paycheck in and I put the rest in my bank account and let it sit, so. Um, show of hands, who is concerned with financing college and tuition? Alex? Well, I think everybody should be concerned about it because it's such a big thing these days. You go to college for four years and you're in debt for the rest of your life. Seems that way, anyway. Yeah. yeah. So what are you doing to help prepare for that? Well, I have a savings account set up. My mother has done, she's put a certain amount in every year uh, since I was born. So I have that to look forward to. And I also have my own job so I can save up for from that as well. Okay. Jocelyn? Um, I don't have anything set up for it at the moment, but I'm relying on like student loans for like not fully relying but i'm going to apply for a student loan 
which will make me in debt for the rest of my life for four years of college. <laughs> Join the club. <laughs> uh, how much do you think you're going to have to take out for what you want to do? I'm not sure yet. Not sure yet? Okay. Have you been looking into it at all? I have been since the sixth grade. Since the sixth grade? <laughs> yeah. Wow. Who have you been talking to? to I've been just doing research basically and like I asked around with like my family that's been to college and stuff. Are there any resources in the school, any people you could talk to here to kind of help get a grasp on it? Probably like your guidance counselors and that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Have you talked to anyone? No. Do those uh, resources exist here in the school? Do yes. They? Okay. We have three guidance counselors, I think. Yeah. Okay. Good. Maddie? Um, well, like, I don't know. I'm. It's just like I'm expected to go to school. Like, my two older sisters went to college, but they dropped out their first year. And then my other older sister, she's, like, there now. And she, like, my one sister's still paying off her debt from her only, like, one year of going mm -hmm. and everything else. And I guess I'm just, like, relying on uh, athletic scholarships, or, like, academic scholarships to, like, try and get me most of the way there and, and try and figure out what to do with the rest. What do you play? Um, track, softball, and volleyball. Okay. And have you been researching different scholarships? Not yet. No? No. <laughs> um, are, uh, so there's guidance counselors you could talk to. Are, are there other research materials here in the school that uh, you can take advantage of? I mean, yeah, probably. I just haven't looked yet. Okay, but. that's fine. When it comes to your goal, your dream job, whatever it is you want to do, military or you know, law enforcement, what are some obstacles that you guys are facing to achieve that goal? And if there was an obstacle that you've overcome, how did you overcome it? How about you, Donald? Any obstacles to getting into the military after high school? No, I haven't really thought about it. What's your family think about going into the military? Uh, my dad said you can't like really blame me for it, for going out and serving our country. Why is that? Because, uh, because like, he, he kind of expects me to work for him, but he said I don't have to and I can go out and do whatever I want. And going to the military has just always been something I wanted to do. Okay. Got you. What about your mom? I haven't really talked to her about it too much, just kind of like with my dad mm -hmm. about the military. Have you talked to her at all about the military? I've said it like once or twice, but that's about it. What's her reaction been? Just like, like why do you want to go do it, kind of. But my dad, he's he kind of wants me to go and do it. Okay. How about you, Max? Um, what are some obstacles maybe that you're facing to get to where you want to be? I'm not really worried about the financial part. I think I'm more worried about getting a job after college. Getting a job after college? Yeah. Why is that? I, just, I think it's more my location right now where I'm at. There's not many job opportunities for what I want to get into, but I'm sure if I moved out of state, there'd be more. Remind me what you want to do? Uh, like sound production. Sound production, okay. Um, have you done any research? You look for any kind of uh, local sound studios? Oh, uh, no, studios? not really. No? Uh, who else is facing obstacles to get to their goal? Michael. I mean, I was pretty young getting into my career. Um, most, you know, career firefighters are, they're in their mid to late 20s, early 30s. Mm -hmm. um, I'm the youngest on my station by, I think, five or six years. Um, but I'm doing the same thing that everybody else can do. So, I mean, age is an obstacle. I mean, a lot of guys or a lot of people, I, I feel, know what they want to do, but they're not old enough, and, you know, they might feel kind of like they have a thumb pushing down on them, and uh, it can be frustrating at times. Um, tell me about that age, that age gap. Uh, how, do you, how do you overcome it, or are you overcoming it? My biggest thing is just working hard and proving that, yeah, there's an age gap. I might be young, but... I can hang with you guys. I mean, that alone kind of gets you some respect. Mm -hmm. I mean, going in, even like my fire class, I was the youngest by three or four years mm -hmm. still. And same thing, I, mean, I was the first one to volunteer and I, you know, showed up every day and worked hard. And it kind of, I mean, the biggest thing is respect and just, you know, just making that connection with people. And that's, that's, a, that's a big part of the fire service is your connection with people and trust. I mean, do you feel you're connecting with them now? Yeah, I mean, there's, everybody says that, you know, there's one or two people that they can put their lives in their hands, but I know that I've got 30 people I can put my lives in their hands, and I'm one of the people that they can put theirs in, so I mean, it's it's kind of a, a mutual respect that you get with it, and I think that's 
probably been one of the most beneficial things for me. So. Okay. So I'm going to open the floor to you guys. What is something that maybe I didn't ask or something that I'm not thinking to ask that you think is really important that needs to be said? I think that the people you meet and the people you know is really important because, like, through Kiwanis, I, um, I, I've met a lot of people, and one of the people is Bruce Williams, and he has a, a law firm downtown. And one day he went, and uh, I shadowed him all day. So I just followed him around the court and stuff, and it was really interesting. And that opportunities like that really sparked my interest into going into law, and I wouldn't have had that opportunity if I wasn't involved in Key Club and Kiwanis. Mm -hmm. So I think that getting to know people and being involved in the community makes a world of difference. Any final thoughts? Maddie? I mean, well, going back to like your whole obstacles and like hardships and stuff, mm -hmm. it's also like all this pressure that the older generations are putting on us. Like I'm only a sophomore and I'm already getting asked like what I'm doing and everything else. And I'm a person who like needs to be told, like especially in school and everything else, needs to be told like what to do before I can start like going after it and doing stuff. So it's really stressful having to think about like everything and trying to like work up and research and do all this stuff while like trying to maintain everything else and just working towards that. How are you adapting to that? I mean, well, I'm just trying to listen to what everyone else says and take advice and just like slowly build up and conquer one thing at a time. Like school is what's most important right now and stresses me out a lot. Yeah. <laughs> so working on that and then if I have free time, try and like do other things. What's some of the best advice you've gotten? Um, to like not rush it and make sure it's actually what I want to do and like know the people that I'm going to work with and like everything else. So, That's good advice. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, I'm, I have no other questions. So I appreciate you guys' time very much. It's been a good conversation. You can find more content from our student panels and our Brain Gain program under the Brain Gain tab at businessjournaldaily.com. 717 Credit Union. Business services designed to meet your daily needs. Commercial loans, business deposits, merchant and payroll services. 717 Credit Union. It's knowing you were treated right every time.